Does the government work for us or do we work for the government? What's so patriotic about the Patriot Act tonight? Assaulting the Constitution and resisting the assaults. This week marks the 10th anniversary of the government's use of the Patriot Act. This hateful law, enacted in the aftermath of 9-11, with no debate in the House of Representatives, and having been read by just two senators before all 100 voted on it, profoundly and directly assaults the freedom of speech, the right to privacy, and the Constitution itself. First, a little history. When we were colonists and the King of England was looking for ingenious ways to tax us, his advisors came up with the Stamp Act. It required that all colonists have a stamp on every official piece of paper in their possession. Thus, one needed to go to a British government office here in the colonies and buy stamps and affix them to all financial documents, legal documents, books, business correspondence, even pamphlets and posters that you plan to hand out or nail to a tree. Question, how did the king know if you had all these stamps on all these documents in the privacy of your home? Answer, Parliament enacted the Townsend Acts. These abominable laws permitted British soldiers to write their own search warrants. Thus, it was not uncommon for soldiers to knock on the door of a home and hand the occupant a piece of paper on which they had authorized themselves to enter the home, ostensibly to look for the stamps. This was the last straw. We threatened to secede from Great Britain. Parliament rescinded the stamp back. We seceded anyway. The king sent soldiers here to kill our soldiers and to take us back. We fought the revolution and we won. We wrote a constitution, and to it we added the Fourth Amendment. That amendment mandates that only judges may issue search warrants, and they may only do so after the government presents to them evidence under oath of the likelihood of criminal activity on the part of the person whose papers and records the government seeks. You see, the framers, when they wrote the constitution, were sick and tired of big government. And they wrote the Constitution to assure that no American government could do to Americans what the king had done to the colonists. Fast forward to 2001, and along came the Patriot Act. Incredibly, it permits federal agents, from FBI agents to Cousin Janet's goons, to write their own search warrants, bypassing the requirements of the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution. And what is equally as offensive, the same Patriot Act makes it a felony for the recipient of a search warrant to tell anyone about it. So under this law, when a federal agent hands you a self-written search warrant, you cannot tell your priest in confession, your spouse in the bedroom, your lawyer in confidence. You can't even tell a federal judge in a public courtroom that federal agents came calling. This is interesting and it's terrifying because the colonists could tell anyone that the British soldiers came calling with their self-written search warrants. And the colonists did so often. They did it loud and they did it long. Well, we have a little good news on this front. Today's Washington Post reports that some Americans have not been taking this lying down. They're not only telling lawyers and judges that the feds have come calling, but they're actually challenging these self-written search warrants in court. In one famous case in Bridgeport, Connecticut, the FBI served a self-written search warrant on an 85-year-old volunteer librarian in her office at the public library and told her not to tell anyone about it. When she handed the warrant to her 75-year-old volunteer colleague, you can't make this stuff up, the feds pursued her for telling another person about the search warrant. On the eve of her federal trial, the federal judge in the case informed the lawyers for the government that the judge was about to declare the Patriot Act unconstitutional. Suddenly and without warning, the feds asked the court to dismiss the case against the by then 86-year-old librarian. Since that time, five different federal judges have invalidated portions of this unconstitutional law, but the feds still use it. In my new book, It is Dangerous to be Right When the Government is Wrong, I make the case that an unjust law is no law at all. Surely a law that contradicts your natural right to privacy and your right to speak the truth is an unjust law. In my book, you'll see a parade of horribles which the government has assaulted, with which the government has assaulted your freedoms, and you'll see what you can do about it. Here's a question for you from the book. Do we have the obligation to obey unjust laws? Check out It Is Dangerous to Be Right When the Government is Wrong for the Answer. From New York, defending freedom, everybody